Hey there, have you ever wondered, should I go with Mac or PC for your programming needs? Well, today we're gonna to answer that question. Hi, my name's Jeff, and I have over 10 years of experience as a developer. I've got five years of experience as being the director of IT for 500 plus employee <coughs> organization. And so today I'm gonna to share that experience with you, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to make a wise decision, a purchasing decision, about how you should go for your programming needs, for your development environments. <clears throat> Sometimes you have an option in this. Other times, however, though, if you work for a company and you're not a freelancer, you have to use what they give you. And so if you do have that option, though, hopefully this video will help you. <clears throat> First, we're gonna start out with the Mac. All right, so this is a MacBook Pro 15 inch. This is a 2019 model, touch bar, um, runs you about I think I paid $2,500 for this one, okay? And so we're gonna talk about the pros of this one. First of all, MacBook Pro, extremely elegant, all right? So if you're traveling, you're working uh, multiple workspaces, or you have meetings, MacBook Pro is gonna fit those needs, right? It's gonna look elegant, and you're not gonna have that gamery vibe like a lot of high-end Windows PCs have. All right, there's longevity. You know, Mac is known for having a longevity about their hardware. It's premium hardware, right? I know a guy who still has one of the old MacBook, like 13 inches, the white clamshell ones that he still uses every day, right? And it's, it's you know, at least 10 years old <clears throat> that he still uses. And so they do have that longevity, okay? Right, and so also on a Mac, you can develop iOS apps. So if you're gonna use Swift, you have to have a Mac. And also, it's based on a Unix system, right? So you can use Linux command in it. And there's a native terminal. And if you like Linux and you like the terminal, you're probably gonna wanna go with the Mac. Okay, so let's talk about the cons though to the MacBook Pro or any Mac in general. They're expensive, right? They're, they're not cheap. You know, if you want a good MacBook Pro, the 13 inch starts out around $1,200 for the 13. If you want 15 inch, it starts out around like 2,200. Uh, um, a good Mac Mini is around a thousand. An iMac is 27 inches around 1799. So they're not cheap in comparison to a Windows based machine. Boot Camp isn't that great. So if you want to use Windows, you can't really count on Boot Camp. It's awful. Uh, the new Boot Camp is at least. It used to work pretty well um, several years ago. Now it doesn't work that well. It's not good at all. There's issue with the drivers, uh, mouse acceleration. It's just not a really fun experience. And it also messes with the fan curves <clears throat> inside the new Macs. If you wanna do gaming, you're not gonna do a whole lot of gaming on this MacBook Pro. Even though it's got an AMD dedicated GPU in it, it's the RX 550, I think. Um, the cooling just isn't there to keep the i7 and that graphics card cool. So it's gonna heat up, it's gonna start um, throttling, it's just not gonna be a fun experience. You might be able to get away with something like League of Legends, but that's probably about it. All right, and also, most people are familiar with uh, Windows UI and Windows commands, you know, as compared to Mac, right? Because Windows is uh, the leader. It is, they have the market share, especially in business computers, with their software. All right, and so next we're gonna talk about the PC. And so for this example, I've got here, a razor blade 15 pro this is uh, also a 2019 model this one has an i7 an rtx 2060 16 gigs of ram 512 gig ssd and it was around 2000 i do believe i got it on sale um, so it's got a lot more power a lot better cooling than the mac but let's talk about the pro it. so it's not as expensive it is several hundred dollars cheaper um, for a very high-end windows laptop um, but it's still less expensive than Mac offers, than Apple offers. Your familiarity, like I was saying earlier, your familiarity with the system itself, how to use the UI, Windows commands, you know, the software that's used, a lot of people are just familiar with that. If you want to use virtual machines, um, unless you use Parallels on Windows, which, or Mac, which is, uh, I think around $130, um, you can run VMs on PC for free. Um, <clears throat> you can also use PuTTY uh, for your, your CLI and even to use as an FTP. 
You can also use PuTTY on um, Mac, but if you're going to do that, why not just use the integrated terminal? Right, and also you can game. You can game on a Windows PC. And if that is something that you're doing, so for example, if you're in college, right, or you want to play games in your spare time in the evening uh, to de-stress from your long day of programming, right, you're going to want to choose a Windows machine because you can actually game on it. So this Razer Blade, um, it's a gaming laptop. However, it's an elegant looking gaming laptop. Um, I have no trouble whenever I take it to board meetings. Um, it doesn't stand out. I can turn the LED, the RGB off on it. And so it doesn't stand out and it still looks elegant. It's got a lot of power, but if I want to, whenever I get home, I can pull up World of Warcraft or something and play uh, with no issues. So let's talk about the cons because there are cons. And so a con is you can't develop iOS applications on a Windows machine. You have to use um, Mac OS. It's not as elegant, right? It's a very hard to find a Windows laptop, except for the Dell XPS, that is elegant as a MacBook Pro. There's some others too. Asus has one, LG has like the Gram. Um, <clears throat> but getting that solid unibody design that Apple uses on their MacBook Pros, um, even their all in ones like an iMac or the Mac Mini uh, or the Cheese Grater, which is the new Mac Pro. It's just not as elegant looking. It doesn't have that premium look unless you go with, like I said, something like an XPS. Um, and sometimes they're just not as high quality. You're not going to get that longevity out of it. Um, I've had multiple Windows laptops that I've had to exchange within two years. You know, I've had to just kind of put them down and go with something new. Um, or in three years or something like that, but you're not going to get that longevity like you would with an Apple. From my experience, that may not be everybody's experience. And also, there's no native Linux or Unix-based terminal. You can put in uh, the Windows Bash shell. Uh, it takes like 10 steps to do. Um, I've used it a couple times. It's not as, uh, it's, I don't think it's as, as elegant or as good as uh, a Linux terminal or a Mac terminal, an Apple terminal. However, it will get that job done if that's what you're looking for. <clears throat> and so as you can see, there are different pros and cons, right? And so you have to weigh those. You have to take several different things into account whenever you're going to get this development environment that you're wanting. If you're wanting something that's elegant and you want to do iOS applications, you're going to have to go with a Mac. There's, there's no way around it. Even if you don't want something elegant and you want to use or want to develop iOS applications, you have to use OS X. Now, there are ways around it that you don't have to use a Mac device, of course. You can always do a Hackintosh, and you can do iOS development on it. Um, make them down to your budget. You know, if you're a college student and you've got $600, you might be able to find a used MacBook Air. Uh, it's possible that you might be able to find, or even a used MacBook Pro. Um, if that's what you're in the market for. But if you want a game, you're going to have to go with Windows. Uh, it's that price point. You're going to get something like an Acer, and hopefully it'll last you the four years that you need. Um, and it may be one of those things that you have $700 now, but you know in two years you're hoping to get an internship. You know Maybe you do some freelance work, and at that time you'll have $1,100 or whatever. Um, and then you can upgrade, go to a different system. That is always a possibility. Uh, it's really based upon preference and need. Um, so you've got to take a lot of different things into account. There's also some honorable mentions. You have some alternatives. Um, these are not the only two ways to develop code. Um, you can use you know, AWS, for example. So if you're learning AWS, you can use Cloud9. And so Cloud9 is a web-based IDE that works in conjunction with AWS EC2 instances. And so you can connect it to your instance and you can start developing code that way through a web-based IDE. Um, I use it for my job and it's really great. Uh, you can also you know, use a Chromebook. A lot of people don't know that, but you can write code on a Chromebook inside of um, a web-based IDE. Uh, I've never used it, don't know how great it is. I know it's possible. I've heard people talk about it. Uh, you can even do a Raspberry Pi if you wanted to, um, and, or another sort of uh, cheap alternative. If you've got an old laptop laying around, you can slap Linux on it and you can pretty much do any development that you want to, as long as it's not iOS or Swift. And so there's a lot of different options out there, right? And so when it comes down to it, there's no real winner here. 
there's no winner between PC and there's no winner between Mac. It is based upon what your preference is, what your budget is, and what your needs are. And ultimately, you can pick a great development environment with either of these configurations or either of these systems. And so I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it uh, educational and full of knowledge, right? So I want to impart this, this 10 year journey that I have, this 10 years of knowledge that I have with you. And so in the next video, we're gonna talk about programming languages. What programming languages should you learn, right? What, what languages should you learn to get the leg up? And so if you like this video, leave a like, please subscribe. And if you have a comment, leave a comment. Actually, I have a question. What do you prefer? What development environment do you prefer and why? Leave that in the comment section below.